uh, how it run uh, and beyond. And this talk will be about the package called TIP that we recently released and it has to do with the Bayesian mixture modeling in clustering applications. So if you're not into Bayesian modeling or clustering, this might not be the talk for you. Now, uh, Bayesian mixture models uh, involves three steps in, usually. And the first step is a probabilistic generation of random partitions. And this could come from a probability distribution or stochastic processes, I mean, it's discretization. And then the second step is an allocation of observations into these blocks. And then the third step will be uh, learning of these parameters. But here, uh, the parameters could be those that are specific to each cluster, as well as those that are common across clusters that sort of guides the uh, probabilistic generation of random partitions in step one. And each partition has a unique Young diagram representation. So this partition corresponds to this Young diagram. And the way to read this is each row corresponds to each block and the number of columns within each row corresponds to the number of balls within each partition. So that's why this and this is the same thing. And a prior on partition essentially takes this Young diagram and returns a probability for all possible Young diagrams of sample size n, in this case, n equals to six. Now, let's say that we know a priori that observation y1, y2, and y3, y4 uh, should likely belong to the same cluster. And then let's say the map maximum of posteriori allocation looks like this. And did we learn this from data? Well, it's a posterior, so we learn something from data, but the role of data may not be that much in some cases. And this chosen partition has a young representation, young diagram representation as follows. And other potential partitions are this and this and this. And the reason is because you know Y1 and Y2 and Y3 and Y4 has to be in the, in the same partitions. So you get these uh, squares. Now, and depending on the model and the hyperparameter you choose, it could be that you're, uh, you're assigning a much higher prior probabilities on this partition uh, rather than these. And that would mean that a priori, you're assigning a very high uh, weight on this compared to these. And then if, even if you try various uh, allocations, even a posteriori, your likelihood might be overwhelmed by the, your prior and you're just given too high posterior probability on this partition. Then what you're doing is that, you know, you're comparing this allocation to, you know, this allocation or, or others are the same. And you're picking this allocation as the maximum a posterior estimate. So you're not really using data that much. You know, you're only using data to comp compare this to this. So you don't want to end up in a situation like this. And in order to prevent this from happening, uh, you can generate all possible Young diagrams and then compute its probabilities. And this is possible if you only have six observations or something because there are only 11 possible Young diagrams. But let's, if you have like 100 observations, which shouldn't be that unusual, then there would be this many Young diagrams. So we can't do this approach. And this is where the FIP package comes into handy because we take an alternative approach and what we do is to consider computing a symmetric and additive functional over all possible prior partitions. And one functional we find particularly useful is called relative entropy. And it basically quantifies evenness of partition sizes. So partitions that are kind of even, it returns a value, will be return, will get a value one, which is the maximum. And the partitions that are uneven will get values that are close to zero, like this and this. And this is how FIP package can be used. So n is the sample size. Here we plug in six, so we don't really need a FIP package. And k plus is the constraint that we have to unfortunately put on. And this is the length of the partition, which corresponds to row of the uh, Young diagram. So here we are fixing that to three, which means that we are only constraining uh, these three partitions. And then, then we also supply the type. This is the model. Here we supply digit process mixtures and alpha is the concentration parameters of this model, which we set to one. And then the mean is we get is 0 0.87. And this is a bit higher than the arithmetic mean of this and this and this, which means that the DPM with the alpha equals to one 
assign slightly higher uh, prior weight on this partition as opposed to these, but not too much. So we're not in likely in this situation at least. And we can do more advanced thing with the fit package, like comparing DPM with the its discretized version, there's just multinomial distributions with different prior distributions on the number of clusters and partitions. But um, this is something advanced and I don't have the time to introduce. So if you're, in, if you're, if you're interested in, feel free to contact us and we can provide more details. Uh, thank you for listening.